Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2023 documentary film Dario Argento Panico. It's a Shutter exclusive and it's coming to Shutter on Friday, February 2nd. I will say if you are a fan of Dario Argento, you probably will want to watch this documentary. If you're not a fan of Dario Argento, you might not want to watch this documentary. I mean, it is very much about, kind of about him, but primarily about his work, uh, which kind of seems in a way that they talk about it to embody him, like he really is his work, basically. It's a little complicated, but I'll talk about that when I get to the synopsis part. This documentary is directed by Simone Scafidi, uh, who did Eva Braun, uh, Fulci for Fake, and Sexual Scandals. I really want to see Fulci for Fake. I heard it's pretty good. I think Severin put that out. Uh, written by Manlio Gomorraska, who did Joe D'Amato, Totally Uncut, uh, Giada uh, Mazzoleni, and David David Pulici, who did Joe D'Amato, Totally Uncut, also with Gomorraska. The film, uh, it's a UK film in Italian, Spanish, English, and French. So, obviously, they interview a lot of different people about Dario Argento, and they interview Dario Argento himself. So, there's a little bit of English, but there's primarily other languages. Primarily Italian, but you do get a little Spanish, you do get a little French, you do get English. Uh, very small English. So, for people who have problems with subtitles, I'm sorry, there's going to be a lot of subtitles for this. But it's worth watching, even though... That's the case, especially if you're if you like the output that Dario Argento has made in his life. So synopsis is basically a documentary about Dario Argento. It's way more about his work. It's way more talking about the films themselves and a little bit about how some of the films were made. Very little bit, but it's more kind of talking about him in an abstract being like, who is Dario Argento? Can we kind of nail this down? Like what sort of feeling does he create with his films? What impact have his films had? And they'll kind of go one by one with some select films of his that are kind of like the bigger ones that a lot of the times mark kind of milestones in his life. Um, but a lot of documentaries, they'll kind of go really hard on doing this cut between you're getting a lot of backstory on who this person is, you know, where they grew up, how they grew up, how that's influenced things. And you get a little bit of that, but you get a very small amount of that. The idea you get from this film is that there's not a lot to Dario Argento himself other than his work. Like, that he literally is his work. Like, that's how he identifies himself. And that's how he lives and finds value in his, himself and kind of always has. So that's kind of an interesting aspect to it. But for that reason, you don't get a typical documentary feel from it. Because it just seems like that stuff's not really all that, that available. Um, one of the things that is kind of weird about the documentary, though, is that they preface it in the beginning by saying that they basically the crew is going with Dario Argento to this getaway where he's secluding himself to write a script for a new film. And the crew's there to interview him and make this documentary. But that doesn't come into play. So it's kind of a weird thing to set it up, being like, hey, he's working on the script, and then not talk about it really, not talk about the creative process at all. And then just kind of be like, we're just there when he's doing it, but you're not going to see any of the process or get any input about it or stories or any of that. So it's a weird thing to kind of preface it that way. And then it kind of has nothing to do with it. So they should have just left that out and just been like, we're interviewing Dario Argento about himself and his work, <laughs> primarily his work. Uh, seeing a little bit of behind-the-scenes footage of Argento actually at work is one of the more interesting things about this film, like that kind of archival footage of him on the set and like telling people where to do things and how to do things and like even helping in the, in the very beginning, it's showing him like working on some of the, the Foley work for the film. He's got like rustling um, bushes and stuff to make some of the noise for the film. Um, those things are very interesting to just see like how he was in the trenches when he was actually making film. Like what was this guy really like? Uh, the score does become pretty overkill at times. It's not the entire film, but there are these moments where they crank it way up. It feels like they're really screaming at you, and it's really unnecessary, and I feel like they really should have kind of pulled it back. Um, the composition of the score I like a lot. It's just how they kind of like pump the volume at certain times just too much. Uh, getting insight into how Argento grew up and how that influences films is interesting, but here's the thing. You get 
a very small amount of that, unfortunately. The little bit you get, it is interesting. There are a few things where they can actually draw, like, this is a little bit of how he grew up, or this is how he kind of was as he grew up, and you can see a bit of the influence in the film. And it, it would have been nice if they would have done a little bit more work with interviewing some people who have maybe studied Dario Argento, because everyone that they talk to are like, filmmakers who have been influenced by him or people who have worked with him or family members. It would have been really nice to get, you know, some people who are like the foremost authorities on Dario Argento and can kind of tell you, okay, well, this is kind of a little bit more of kind of like drawing these parallels between what he went through in his life versus what these films are. You get a little bit of that, but you could have gotten a lot more. And I think the documentary in in and of itself would have had more impact if you could have gotten more of that insight it's always nice to have people interviewed who really do a lot of analysis. And there's just not that really here much. Uh, Argento talking about filmmaking is the most engaging. Uh, it, it the portions of, But the portions of others talking about him are the best parts of it. So he it seems like he doesn't really like to talk about himself that much. And when it comes to asking him questions about himself and his life, you don't get a whole lot from him, honestly. And it's actually very boring. But when he's talking about the actual films and the filmmaking process and stuff, that's the more interesting stuff. That's where you get the most insight from him. That's where you get the most interesting kind of uh, reactions from him, basically. But he's a very low energy, like monotone type person, especially at this age. So it's not like a lively, interesting, engaging interview. And that's been one of the things that I've noticed about interviews with Dario Argento is they're not super interesting. Um, you really have to pay a lot of attention and kind of fight your eyelids uh, starting to close. But that's why it's great that they have other people interviewed because when those people are talking about Dario Argento, way more animated, way more engaging, and a lot of the times they have more interesting things to say about him that he's not going to say about himself. Um, the setup was that the documentary crew was with Argento uh, when he's trying to write a new film, but you see none of that. Uh you see like the end of it basically like you see like two separate portions where like he has a script in his hand and then at the end where he's handing it to someone and that's like it so it's kind of like what the uh it really shows argento as a pretty cranky guy in his older age uh, i don't know if that was an intentional choice that they want people to be like yeah he's just like this old cranky dude now or if that was kind of unintentional and that's just how he is like all the time but um, I guess that's what it is. I mean, maybe that's going to be me when I get old. I might just be a cranky old dude. Uh, yeah, it, it just doesn't make him seem all that interesting. It's a little bit annoying at times with it. Uh, it would have been nice to get some interesting anecdotes about how shoots went. Uh, there's really not a lot about that. Like I was saying, they talk, they talk about the films, but there are no like big anecdotes around the films of like, hey, there's this really weird thing that happened or this really funny thing happened or this was, this was wild, this was out of control. There's none of that like interesting type stuff. It's more about just talking about this was a film, this is a little bit about how he made the film, moving on, there's another film. And then you talk to these people that are being interviewed about him who kind of talk about their feelings on him and what his films mean to them and to other people in the world and how it changed cinema and stuff like that. But not from like a historical standpoint, it's just like a, I'm a fan and he has influenced me standpoint. So there's some to be desired with this documentary, the way it was put together for me personally. Uh, the filmmakers ask Argento some questions that seem very much like so what questions. They kind of don't matter and I don't understand why they put the footage into the film because it's literally these questions that just seem like non sequiturs where you're just like, okay, are we, are we like going somewhere with this? And I think maybe they were hoping that like Argento would like pick it up and kind of like run somewhere with it. And he just doesn't, it's just like, it kind of like drops and they left that in the film. And I'm just like, why? Like, why would you do this? Like it, it more than anything, it's a speed bump in the film that kind of really messes up the pacing of it. Uh, I do like the ending of it though. There's, there are some good quotes from Argento at the very end. That's the best portions of the interview with him. So it is a, a nice way to kind of end things. And I do like the kind of final thing that they show. 
So they knew exactly how they wanted to end it. They, they had some impact. They did a good job with that. So I'm glad for that one. Uh, there are some unsaid things in this film that allude to an unpleasant side of Argento. Uh, and the filmmakers kind of a lot of the times feel af seem like they're afraid to go there. So you can make a do documentary however you want. And me personally not being a documentarian, not someone who's ever done a film like this, I don't know how I would be. But I will say that what would be nice is if you get kind of more diving into what people can tell is going on there. Because like I said, there's a lot of things that seem very unsaid. And there's even instances where people are being interviewed and you can tell they're dancing around things. Because they don't want to say something negative about Argento. And there's some very strong moments of that as well. And you're kind of like, that's where maybe you push a little bit more and you try and figure out what's going on. But it seems like they kind of just left it. And maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. And like I said, also, you know, maybe that's just a very uncomfortable thing. And they didn't feel like doing that to those people because they were, you know, providing their time for free and they didn't want to kind of push them on that stuff. I'm looking at it more, I guess, from like a journalistic type standpoint. But it would have been interesting to know because you really do get the sense that Argento was his work and his personal life was nothing to emulate. That basically he, I, w I wouldn't say he didn't care about his personal life, but his focus was his work. And there were a lot of things that didn't go great for his personal life because of how focused he was on work and how it's always been like that for him. Like he finds value in himself and he finds living life through his work. Like he always needs to be working type thing. And because that happens, a lot of things fall by the wayside and relationships get strained and there are issues. So it just kind of seems like that. So it's one of these things where, and it becomes more clear at the end of the film that that's kind of, you know, a thing. It's like emulate him from a um, technical standpoint. This is me talking. Like emulate him from a technical standpoint, but don't emulate him from like a personal standpoint. Um, and there are a lot of examples of that. I mean, Stanley Kubrick was was probably another one. Uh, and probably, you know, there are ton Lucio Fulci is another one. Like there are a lot of, a lot of people, but... Anyway, overall, I did enjoy it enough. I would recommend it, especially for people who like Dario Argento. Uh, I am going to go over some of the bigger names that were interviewed in this, but I want to give my rating first, just in case anyone doesn't want to know, like they want the surprise of people being interviewed, so you can drop off. But out of five stars, half stars in play, I would give it a three-star rating. I was as close to giving it a three and a half, but for all the reasons that I had issues with it, I feel like it's just, it's just not at the three and a half star rating. Solid enough three stars, though. I do recommend it. So, anyway, this is where I'm going to talk about some of the people interviewed. Guillermo del Toro, the best person interviewed. Very engaging. I could listen to that guy talk all day long. All day long. He's super insightful. Gaspar Noé, decent things to say. Asi Argento had a lot more revealing things to say, especially because not only is she the daughter of Dario Argento, but she worked with him as well. So there's a lot of complicated stuff going on there. Uh, Luigi Cosi, very interesting, very energetic guy, uh, like listening to him. Lamberto Bava, uh, Michele Soave, um, also really great to listen to, could listen to him talk all day. Claudio Simonetti from Goblin, he's awesome. Uh, Nicholas Winding Refn had some interesting this, things to say. And Franco Farini, who script writer and had worked on some stuff with uh, with Argento. But those are some of the bigger names. That's not everyone in there, but like Fiore Argento's interviewed and uh, Argento's sister and a few other people. But anyway, that's all I have to say about this. Please put some comments down here when you see it. Uh, did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you in between on it? Um, you know, I know there are going to be people watching it and they're like, this is an awesome documentary. I don't know why you just gave it three stars. And I get that. Like for me personally, it's just not there. But uh, let's talk about it. Yeah, in a, in a good manner. Uh, do me a favor, hit subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate that. That's your best way to repay me for all the free content and hit the notification bell button because then you know when I'm putting up new videos. Oh yeah, and then you can do the thumbs up on this if you want to help me with the YouTube algorithm. That is appreciated. But regardless, thanks for taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.